Here's a couple of examples to get us going with differential equations. With example number one, we're tasked with finding the solution to dy dx equals the opposite of cosecant squared plus 2x minus 5. So again, we're trying to find the original function y, and we're going to do so by taking the antiderivative. Right? So we're going to antiderive. The antiderivative of dy dx is just going to be y. All right? The antiderivative of negative cosecant squared. We learned that way back when, when we talked about our trig derivatives, the antiderivative of negative cosecant squared, that's cotangent of x. And then we have two quick parts to a polynomial there, x squared antiderived, excuse me, 2x antiderived to x squared, minus 5 antiderived to minus 5x, and then we need our arbitrary constant at the end. So we have cotangent x plus x squared minus 5x plus c, and we have solved our differential equation. With example two, we want to do the same thing. We want to solve it, but we want to find the particular solution. So we have to figure out what c is by knowing what the initial condition is for x and y. So again, let's take our antiderivative. All right, so y will be equal to e's antiderivative is itself. And then 6x squared, that's going to become 6x cubed over 3, right? We add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number. And then the 6 and the 3 will simplify to 2, so we have 2x cubed. And of course, we still have our plus c. Right? So again, if we were to derive this, we would end up with that. Right? We want to figure out what c is, knowing that when x is 1, y is 0. So we're going to replace y with 0, so we have 0 equals, and then we're going to replace x with 1. So we have e minus 2 times 1 cubed. Right? E to the first is really e, we don't need to write the 1 here. 1 cubed is 1, so what we end up happening here is e minus 2, oh sorry, we have our plus c. Well, let's try this again. Plus c, there we go. Alright, so now we want to get c all by itself, so we'll subtract e from both sides. Alright, so... Uh, we know that negative 2 uh, times 1 cubed is negative 2. Add 2 to both sides, and c is equal to 2 minus e. All right, so now that we have the c value, now we can go back here, and we can replace c with 2 minus e. And we have our particular solution. Last but not least, example 3. We wanted to also do what we've done so far and come up with the domain. So, secant squared, right? again, knowing our trig derivatives and antiderivatives, secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So we have tangent x plus c. When x is 0, y is 3. So 3 is equal to the tangent of 0 plus c. We have to know our trig chart. We have to know the value of tangent at 0. Tangent of 0 is 0. So that means that c is equal to 3. So now we have y equals the tangent of x plus 3. So we want to graph that. All right? Perhaps that can help us find our domain. All right? So if we graph tangent, if you recall for tangent, let me change colors here real quick. There's our coordinate plane. Um, tangent follows this path right here. Okay, But that's only one of multiple occurrences of tangent because then we have ourselves a vertical asymptote, and then it does the same thing, and it does the same thing over here as well, over and over and over again. My drawing is rather poor, but you can check this out on your graphing calculator. Right? We actually want tangent of x plus 3. So what it's going to do is going to move the entire graph up 3 units. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do it the quick way. But instead of moving all those up 3 units, I'm going to drop the x-axis down 3 units. So now... You can see that this goes through the point over 0, up 3. All right? And that's the only part of tangent which goes through that point. This part doesn't go through that point, All right? nor does that one. And the ones to the left, to the right, forever, they don't apply. The only one that matters is that one right there because that part of tangent is the only part that goes through the point 0, 3. To get to the next part, I've got to lift my pen up off the paper. It's not continuous. It's not going to be part of our solution. Okay? So we want the domain of our function based off of this information. Well, tangent, again, is undefined at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In between, it's fine. So our domain is that x is between, oops, not including, sorry. So just x is greater than negative pi over 2 and less than pi over 2. That would be our domain. 
Whereas for the general solution, now there's no particular point that we have to go through, so our domain would be all real numbers except for um, any multiple of pi over 2.